Space Chronicles in partnership with the European Space Agency. A restless sea at once enchanting and threatening. The deep waters holding the secret of how life began on Earth. The ocean is a point of departure. Here the evolutionary adventure began. Beneath the wind and the waves, the first forms of life, at least as far as we understand it, flashed into being. Three thousand five hundred million years of the Earth's history, most of its history, if we had come to this planet and looked out over the sea, this is all we would have seen. The water rolling towards the beach, but what we wouldn't have seen would be the, that it was teeming with life. All the life was inside the sea. And this is what we are aiming to look for in astrobiology. Astrobiology is the science of searching for traces of life outside our solar system. For the first time in mankind's history, after speculating for literally thousands of years, we have the ability of applying science to these big philosophical questions, uh, and we will relatively soon be in a position to answer the questions whether there is life elsewhere in the universe or not, or at least if life is common. The quest to find alien life outside our solar system is being pursued here at the French space agency, the CNES, near Toulouse. This is the nerve center of CORO, the first space mission to study the stars of our galaxy for rocky planets like our own, what are known as exoplanets. In December 2006, a Russian Soyuz rocket blasted off from Baikonur in Kazakhstan with CORO on board. The project is the fruit of collaboration between the European and Brazilian space agencies, the CNES and the CNRS, French Centre for Scientific Research. The flight engineers keep a constant watch on the spacecraft. It has to be maintained at an even temperature around minus 40 degrees C and it has to be still and steady. When you see the variations in temperature, we have a whole load of thermal regulators on board that make sure that the instrument is as cold as possible and above all as stable as possible for the mission. Coro is mounted with a telescope and four CCD light detectors. It's on a circular polar orbit about 900 kilometers above our heads and spends its time staring at certain fixed points of the galaxy. The CCDs have already proved that they can offer raw information on distant stars that's far more detailed than mission scientists had ever expected. In order to observe the stars, which are very faint, you have to have the sun at the back of the satellite. So, for the first part of the year, including the summer, Coro looks towards the center of the Milky Way. And during the second part of the year, the winter time, it looks towards what we call the anti-center of the galaxy. We repoint the satellite another two times each year, so we move it four times a year allowing us to have four observation periods, two shorter and two longer periods. With the Earth and Sun at its back and no atmosphere to distort the light, Coro's cameras have a clear view, but every time it's moved it's a delicate operation. During these critical operations we check everything, we have a simulation set up. We generate the commands that we're going to send, we run them through the system, and we can verify if the commands are correct, and if the command has the effect that we expected it to have. Every 110 minutes, Coro completes an orbit, sending down regular chunks of information to a network of receiving stations from the Arctic Circle to South Africa. All that data makes its way back here to Toulouse.
it's looking for the tiniest variations in light. Coro is an instrument that measures the light from stars with extreme precision. In the lower frequencies, Coro can measure changes in the signal level in the light to a millionth degree. By these oscillations in the light, we can manage to understand what's going on on the surface of the star, and so model the functioning of the star and thus also better understand our own sun. Coro tries to understand the seismology of distant stars and detect new planets. The technique appears simple, but is terribly tricky in reality. We're seeking to detect little attenuations in this light, a sign that a planet is passing in front of the star. There you can see a pretty large planet like Jupiter. This occultation technique allows us to work out the mass of the planet. For the moment, Coro has confirmed that it's found five planets and around 40 more are waiting to be processed. When you superimpose several passes of the planet, you get a curve that's a lot more precise, and you can really see that. This is the first planet that Coro found, and we hope to find planets that are a lot smaller. And that's the ultimate goal of the mission, the dream ticket, to find somewhere like Earth, once known as a telluric planet, where life could be sustained or has already developed. If we find telluric planets like the Earth and we detect a certain number of them, we can extrapolate the number of habitable planets, possibly with life, so that figure is really important. The Coro mission is the first of its kind and will run until at least the end of next year. Once it's located a rocky planet, other missions will follow. The life on Earth has changed the atmosphere over billions of years, producing oxygen, methane and other gases that are out of chemical equilibrium in our atmosphere. And that uh, means that if you find a signature of oxygen in another planet's atmosphere, based on our thinking, under certain circumstances, which are relatively easy to define, there would be life there. The scientists are searching for the kinds of life that we can imagine and can understand. It's as good a starting point as any, given that in many ways we're just beginning the process of looking at planets beyond our solar system. We don't know today whether life is common in the universe or not. And I think it would be fascinating, as well as we know that we are on a windy beach in Holland at the moment, uh, we would like to know whether we are alone in the universe. Perhaps the Coro mission will help us write a new chapter in the story of how life first blossomed. Mm -hmm.